Thank you again for joining the QED Customer Podcast. Um, I've got Frankie on this particular episode. Uh, has been a, a great leader in the QED space for a few areas. Uh, in particular, we're talking about, in this episode, the shipping portal that they've released and developed in response to an effort and project that they've done with a core QED customer, uh, the Filtration Group. Um, and we talk about about what it means to really run efficient, high volume shipping. Um, what's cool about this particular example uh, in rollout is they had a direct to consumer um, uh, strategy as a business. Filtration Group had a direct to consumer strategy and needed a tool set that was going to um, tailor both QAD and their business process to best serve that direct consumer strategy. Um, so we, we cover some um, details around how they've been able to leverage that portal to have very high volume of shipping on a daily basis, reporting on that shipping integration to the core carriers um, for a variety of size of products. Um, you know, I'm not sure if the direct to consumer model is something that you may feel is relevant for your business. Uh, cause a lot of QD customers, it's not, however, everybody's shipping. So there's a lot of good best practices that we cover in this episode. That I think you should, uh, probably get some benefit from, uh, and then also in conjunction with the West coast user group where they're doing a, a webinar series and we'll be talking a little bit about the shipping portal um, and rolling out a lot of information about this portal. So that will be linked in the show notes to this episode. And uh, we're looking forward to you guys joining that to get a little bit of a deeper dive into what Frankie covers um, on this episode. Thanks. But I uh, well, first want to start off um, with, I mean, and you've told me a little bit about the history, obviously, but the, how you kind of came into the QAD space. Tell us about like Tyrex, your brother getting linked up with Steve. Let's get. A little do you want to do everything? Wow. Let's get a little history going. Um, a long time yeah, ago. Remember, we only have forty minutes. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> um, all right, so this is the abridged version, Frankie. Okay, 1989. My brother uh, and go. Steve got, got into uh, got forty years to go <laughs> into uh, QAD. They both worked in QAD. They developed uh, QAD at the time, MFG Pro. Right? When did QAD start? Uh, the early 80s, I think. Okay, so they right. were within the first 10 years. Oh yeah, yeah, they were in the office, the QAD office in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Yeah. Um, got rid of that. It's oh yeah, it's, uh, got they got rid of. of Every, they, they got rid of the building in Santa Barbara also. They sold it, what, $30 million? I thought it's $70 million, but I guess I they, they were... Deucer camp. Yeah, first come, first... Yeah. Anyway, the sorry, million. 89, they started Anyway, they together. started, Steve was... Um, uh, and they hit it off, they were good. Uh, QD at the time, QD is a love-hate relationship with, with partners uh, all the time. And at the time, that stage of the relationship between QD and partners was that QAD did not care about custom work. Partners, it's like the golden age because every company has something special and they need something custom, mm -hmm. right? QAD is a great product, one of the best in the market. However, every company has something special. So the, the custom uh, work, a lot of partners flourish at that time. So Eric had his own company. Steve was and taking- Eric's your brother? My brother, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Steve uh, was a, uh, thinking to work with Eric and be an employee of, of Eric's company, but then he figured out that uh, he would be better off on him by himself. Um, and he opened uh, Broom Street. Um, I think at the time it was just a consultant and then eventually it became Broom Street. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And um, so 1989, I was, well, that was 1992, but 1989, uh, 1990, I, I was. Back in Israel, I was mm. in the army, first Gulf War. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think we won. And <laughs> um, awesome. so for myself personally, 1996, yeah, yeah, uh, cool. I finished the army service. I went to um, university. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, didn't, I needed work. I, I didn't care about university too much. And I left university and um, um, 
I joined my brother in his company. He needed somebody in Ireland to represent him. I was there, lived in Ireland for a year. And um, from there, I came back to the States. Eventually, about the year 2000, Eric, my brother, and his partner split. And Eric and myself opened Tarex in mm. 2000. Um, fast forward, what was it, 2008, I think? 2005, I don't remember, it was 2000, something like that. Steve needed a from Bruce needed the, uh, a new app. And we have, we worked QRD, we had QRD customers, um, and we, um, we helped him with the new app. It was a field, uh, field desk. It's part of the mobile desk uh, products. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, because your QRD needed this app specifically, to finish, complete a sale in, for some company in Europe for 2,000 technicians. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and Steve at that time was stretched a little bit thin, and so we, we came in, we did that, and, and then we said, okay, I guess we can work together, so we'll start working together. And strategically, what we decided, that Tarex, the company that I own, um, will stop doing QRD work, and any QRD work we get, uh, we're gonna uh, do it under Broom Street, so Broom Street is the flagship of QOD, and if there is any work that is non-QOD, Broom Street will throw, a, and Tarex will do it as Tarex. Um, so, so, uh, so that's kind of like how the inception happened, and, and since then we've been working with a lot of projects, with a lot of customers with the uh, Broom Street, and I, I pretty much wear a Broom Street shirt every time mm -hmm. um, we do something like that, like the implementation we had in Florida, Right, everything like these conferences. I'm Broom Street because mm -hmm. this is QOD, right? Right. Um, Got it. Right. I don't get independently paid. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's everything goes through Broom Street because that's mm -hmm. uh, how we do that, and um, and that's it. So Broom mm -hmm. Street, flagship of QOD. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve himself, uh, just like my brother, they've been with QOD 34 years, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Broom Street exists now 30 years, mm -hmm. right? And um, a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of like the, the history. What is like your specific role like uh, in that with, with this? I do everything. Yeah. I clean the bathroom. I, you know, I dust the, yeah. And I also do a lot of the product. So mm -hmm. um, we have, okay, so there's services. Broom Street, there's services and there's products. Mm -hmm. And uh, the services, usually that's, Steve does that, most of them. Martin does a lot of the sweeper stuff, technical stuff, right, servers. And um, there's other partners that Broomstead has that just like um, myself, they, you know, different aspect of the product, like for the mobile apps, for, right, so, mm -hmm. but everything, the flagship is, is Broomstead, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve is wise enough to, uh, Steve and Martin are wise enough to, um, to get, uh, a lot of good people hmm. uh, on their team. Yeah. So what is specifically, the main thing that I do for Broom Street, uh, specifically is we have, so there's services and products. As yeah. far as products, what we try to do is to create products that either QD doesn't have mm -hmm. or customer ask for stuff that is special that a company like us can do quickly. And yeah. QD will take time. Like for example, when they, when QD was showing the, the screen with the in the warehouse that has all the statistics of how many orders and stuff. Yeah. Like not only we did it 15 years ago, yeah. we have it on an app that all the executive that's their screensaver. They look yeah. what's going on at any yeah. point at the day. Yeah. Yeah. How many orders? How many are shipped? Right. Yeah. And it's color coded. And if something is late, right away they're on top of it. Right. right. So. Right. QD is catching up, uh, which is great. So that's, so that's, um, yeah. Okay. So that's so, the, so tell us about the, you have the mobile that, that you guys, you know, are, are supporting. And okay. So there's, bring, and then you've got the web. Port, right. So there's yeah. product or services. Now services, right. that's more like Stephen Martin. Yeah. I do a we little a bit podcast sometimes with Steve on the services side. Of right. This. Yeah. When it comes to products, there is the mobile apps and there is the portals and in the mobile apps, uh, world, there is the native mobile apps and there is the web mobile apps that are websites that act like an app, but it's a 
it's not, it, it's it's not it's coded a web, in the Apple language or whatever. Right, right. It's yeah. a website. Right. It's a website. Now, Android is better than iPhone on that because with Android, when you go to a website like that is an app website, you can just say save on my desktop and it will save it as an icon and you can treat it like as an app. Mm -hmm. You click on it, it opens up like an app and does right. But you can do that on Apple now too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show so you. Apple is catching up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's good for us that yeah. we can do that in Apple. Yeah. So there is the so these are so so the native. I don't do native anymore for Broom Street. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even the field desk, uh, we switched to uh, a new version that I wasn't uh, involved with. It. Mm -hmm. well, however, they uh, all the portals mm -hmm. and the mobile app that are web view. I'm pretty much involved in all of them and develop all of them. Mm -hmm. And that includes uh, supplier portals, portals for buyers, portals for customers, shipping portal, a, a lot of apps that are a, for, a, um, uh, for, for the clients, administration, mm -hmm. uh, views, monitoring, stuff like that. So, that's, so what would you say is a difference? I mean, obviously from like the customer or supplier portal, that's like making your information externally accessible. But for like an internal portal, what's the difference between that and like a browse or something like that? Okay. In principle, you do not want to give QAD users to your suppliers, mm -hmm. right? They should not have access to QAD. They should right. not have access to your network, right. Right? right? So you need some medium that will that the suppliers can work with, mm -hmm. and that will work with QAD, mm -hmm. right? So. The portal is, has QAD data in mm -hmm. and out. Like for example, the supplier can confirm POs, can see what POs are open, what you know, what POs are closed, and, and stuff. There is uh, stuff that is partially uh, QAD, like RFQs, right? So the data comes from a QAD, like the supplier item. However, the process itself is in the portal is done, and the supplier portal also has stuff that has nothing to do with QAD. Right. For example, if you want to do surveys. Right. right. How is the war in Ukraine affect your uh, product? What yeah. items are affected? Right. How's the the train uh, disaster in Ohio? You know what products yeah. are affected. Now in the supplier portal, we also can do it geographically. Like you can see on the map where the suppliers are, okay. and you can say, okay, I want to choose these suppliers. There is other uh, criteria that you can create in the portal, and you can say, okay, let's say I have. 5,000 suppliers, I'm sending these 200, this survey, and, uh, and I can do it geographically or by type of supplier. And, uh, and now I, I follow up with, with just these 200. Mm -hmm. And all the communication is through the portal. Other stuff, yeah. documents, yeah. right? So if you have specific documents that you want the suppliers yeah. to know, either specific for a supplier or yeah. general uh, documents, like how to package your stuff, what right. documentation we want. Right? right, right, right. So you have everything for the supplier at the same place. Got it. Right? And we integrate with the company uh, document management system. So they update it in one place. Yeah. And as soon as the document is updated now, then the latest version is on the supplier. They don't need to look into emails. When was the last version of the document, right? You know that, oh, yeah. you know, more than me about this kind of stuff. Contacts, right? The suppliers of contacts, customer service, performance, you know, who's responsible for operation. That is outside of QAD. That is done in the, in the portal. Yeah. Um, so um, quality, grading, this is stuff that is involved with QD also, like the scorecards, but there is all stuff that is special with the with the suppliers. They can log into the portal and see their scorecards, mm. right? You don't. They don't need to call and says, "Can you email me the, the scorecard?" Mm. Or oh, I lost it or something, right? Mm. So it's it's right there. So that's kind of the idea of the supplier portal. Yeah. Right? So it has QD stuff, non QD stuff, and stuff that is loose, mm. and it's because you need that medium yeah. that is. Um, that is very um, separated from yeah. your network, yeah. right? Yeah. So now, in principle, one of the things we also do, every customer has their own server. Mm -hmm. We don't share servers between customers. Right, single right? That's kind of like our principle today. I don't know, maybe in the future we'll change it, but right now for all the customers, that's how it works. Right. So if one customer screw up and let's say something goes on, that something goes off and it's like, take forever and the server is slow because of that, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect any of other of the customers. Right. Like it's actually separate servers. Right. right. Now, another way, like let's say the, the shipping portal, 
Well, so the, let's just talk about the, the supplier portal for one more. The second. supplier portal. Yeah, okay, yeah. Go ahead. So, so for the supplier portal, that's the the avenue for a supplier to, in a self service way, interact with either the QAD data without right. compromising access to Correct. QAD, or also perform some sort of task, like whether it's communication, like an RFQ to that level, or whether it's like uploading of you know documents. Um, I think it was the ASN that we right. were talking about yeah. a lot. Pack yeah. Slips, yeah. Yeah, pack sli- yeah, invoices. So, yeah. Right. So that that's that's one and, and then how how would someone in finance that's using QAD integrate like how would you recommend them integrating like the supplier portal into like their daily, you know, tasks, their day to day activity? Like is it, it is it just discovering what the supplier portal does and just replacing what the, how they would how they would do it now with that or right. like how would that work you it's, know it's two ways yeah one and i apologize i should have said before we also partner with other companies like for mm-hmm. example iss group they mm-hmm. have a great product called i purchase yeah they yeah. have i approve i yeah. call, i quote i voucher great yeah. products and we these are complementary products Right. right. They don't have surveys, right? So there's mm-hmm. some stuff it's it's overlapping. We mm-hmm. do, they do, right? Like confirming POs. Mm-hmm. However, if they already have iPurchase, which is a great product, and they want to add on to it, right? Uh, a new model, that's something you do. So if they yeah. already work with iPurchase, they yeah. continue working with iPurchase and they right. get the, the other benefits. Mm-hmm. The other uh, part is that as far as daily life, we automate the processes. Mm-hmm. So if a PO is created, yeah. an email is sent to the supplier, they don't need to call the supplier, right? right. So the supplier have to, and so we have a vast system of alerts mm-hmm. and you can set it up. So you can say, okay, if I don't get uh, a confirmation in this date range, mm-hmm. okay, alert uh, the buyer mm-hmm. or alert the supplier first. Why didn't you confirm? If there is a, a request to change the PO, you know, there's three areas usually you want to change, let's say the price. Yeah. The, the quantity on the split lines, right? Say, okay, you ask for a thousand, I can give you 600 in September and 400 in, in October, right? So you can request stuff like that. Uh, you can request change of uh, due date or performance date, right? So performance date is usually in control of the supplier so mm-hmm. that a lot of times you can update QD right away. Mm-hmm. If it's a request to change for the due date, now that's, that, that has a cascading effect in QD for other stuff because depends on what you're ordering. It could be raw material for other products, so everything has to change. So now that's more involved with the buyer. Mm-hmm. Um, but they can request. Right, right? yeah, it's an easy way to make that. <laughs> and request, yeah. so everything is automated. So the, all the communication is recorded, yeah. and you can have an audit. It's yeah. not like a phone. Did you say May or June or July? Right. I didn't hear you, right? right. It's, it's right there, email. what you ask, yeah. when it was asked, who yeah. took care of you, what did they change, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So the, okay. the, it's traceable, it's auditable, you can mm-hmm. see, and you can work with, with that. And the supplier has visibility for their performances. Mm-hmm. Right? In performances, usually there's, there's a lot of factors, but in basic, it's do you deliver on time, mm-hmm. and how many parts that you delivered are rejected, mm-hmm. right? but in the basic. Yeah. Okay? So if you take just these two factors, Let's say I'm the supplier. The due date is, let's say, February 27. Mm-hmm. I send it on February 10. Mm-hmm. I have two and a half weeks. However, they received it March 5. Okay? Now, it's affecting my performances. If I don't have a record that I actually send it yeah. on yeah. February 10, now it's a problem. Uh, my, my score will go down significantly if mm-hmm. I don't have a record. But they may say, you know what? The supplier is fine. The problem is with the shipping company. We may need to change the trucking company that we use, mm. right? Mm-hmm. So that this visibility mm-hmm. helps a lot uh, with so the you're communication. you're working on the right problem as opposed Correct. to... Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. And because you can see it, you know, you can track it also. A lot of times right. we, we provide tracking if, if the shipping company, the trucking company, UPS, mm-hmm. FedEx, of course, but tracking companies, a lot of them mm-hmm. provide you also mm-hmm. with the tracking capability and you can see what's going on. Right. 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 Okay. Okay, so it so doesn't that, change, yeah. it just automates a lot of the operation and, then, and, they, and they can concentrate on the, uh, on the uh, problems that are not resolved automatically. So if the alert says confirm, that you don't need a human being to say to, mm-hmm. to, to activate it, right? It's automatically. 
Right. So if, let's say, you, you need the confirmation in a certain date, three days before that, you can say, okay, now, if it's, there's no confirmation, mm -hmm. I want to alert the buyer. Mm -hmm. Right. So the yeah. buyer only take care of this stuff. It doesn't have to right. call all the suppliers all the right. time. Right? right, right. And they can prioritize their day. Correct. Accordingly. Contacts, right? Yeah. The, the Rolodex. They, you want to communicate with certain uh, groups in the organization. Like yeah. certain stuff you want to communicate with customer service. Right. Certain stuff you want to con communicate with the performance group, right? Mm -hmm. So what, this way, if somebody leaves the company in mm -hmm. the supplier side, as a, as, a, you know, as a buyer, you don't know that. <clears throat> right. But because they're responsible, right. right? Yeah, you give them the power to, to, Correct. to handle that. Exactly. Yeah, right. That makes sense. Right. All right. So then, so then on the, so that's the supplier side. And so then now on the customer side, you know, how, you, you have a customer portal as well. So how is that working? <laughs> customer portal. Yep, customer yep. portal. Um, again, QD have great product with that. Mm -hmm. With the field desk, we have CRM portal, we have uh, field services portal. Yeah. QD has great products. However, and that is something we always hear, is that if there, every company has something special. Right. I don't care who you are, yeah. there's something special that make you who you are. Right. Because right. if every, if it was so All standard vanilla. and easy, yeah. you know, everybody will make will do what you do. Yeah. And it could be the way you organize a warehouse, the way you communicate with your customers. It, it could be. Uh, many things. Uh, if we talk about customer uh, portal, mm -hmm. very similar to the supplier portal, customers should not have access to QD. Mm -hmm. yeah. They should not have access to your network, mm -hmm. right? They need to see certain information. They need to be able to order. They need to yeah. get quotes. Mm -hmm. They need to get uh, statements. Um, and they need to see their invoices, right? So yeah. the portal. Um, for the customers. So the number one is the shopping cart, mm -hmm. right? And that shopping cart is integrated directly into QD. Mm -hmm. So the inventory levels are correct. Mm -hmm. It goes from order to uh, uh, to uh, allocate, to pick, and mm -hmm. it prints the paperwork in the warehouse right away. Nobody's mm -hmm. intervening, right, so as the order comes in. Mm -hmm. um, we also integrate not just our shopping cart, other shopping carts like Shopify and Amazon. Yeah, right? and there's that uh, uh, big commerce or something that we right. wanted for the so, big box retailer. Right, so all this stuff is, is handled automatically. Yeah. They just need to work to deal with exceptions. Right. And they need to get the product out the door. Got it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If everything goes well, that's all they need to do. And, and they need like a special, uh, Steve likes to call it uh, uh, a Frankie position. Because when we do implementation, mm -hmm. I don't just do my stuff. I also like all over the place, in the warehouse. Why is this not picked? Why is this open? Why is this, uh, I have a location, but there is no yeah. order in the, for yeah. shipping. Why is it? Like you don't so, need to know all that. <laughs> right, Steve, Steve gets annoyed, but it's, a, but it's good. <laughs> and I think a, a lot of the, every, customer that we want they see that and they yeah. realize somebody has to do that somebody has to hold the stick from both sides right. uh, not just the manufacturing part not just the shipping part just like needs to be all over the place to see that uh, not in the bad way right um, right, right right yeah so for the customer have a comprehensive knowledge of how every all these parts are right. inter interchangeable right you know? yeah so the shopping cart we have and and again QD has a great customer um, portal mm -hmm. however what I said we provide stuff that QD does not provide. Mm -hmm. For example, if the customer have a special design that mm -hmm. you don't want to have for the shop, right? Right. So our um, our, our a, a e commerce applies that. What font, colors, yeah. right? Uh, any mm -hmm. specific filters they want to have, any specific rules they want to have, right? So this stuff, right, for for the customer is really good. Yeah. They they have somebody to talk with, and it handles quickly. Yeah, right, yeah. and a lot of customers. That's what they say. QD provide them the customer portal for free. Mm. However, they cannot apply it because they need to change the font because they want and the colors because they want it to match the website. Something as simple mm. as that. Right, right, yeah. Um, Just reskin it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because it's customer facing. Right, because yeah. this is part of your company's right brand portfolio, yeah, and yeah. The, you don't want the customer thinking, "Oh, wh why am I going here? It doesn't look, you know." Native? Yeah. Am I? Yeah. Is this phishing? Am I get right, scammed? Right. Yeah. Um, and of course, if if they have special way to do statements, for example, for the yeah. customers, so they can do it through the portal, and the customer can see their history and, and right. right. Okay. 
Okay, so then kind of a little bit further downstream now, now say, you know, customers that got the got their orders, you know, in, now we're at right. the shipping side. You know, that's right. the, so, so, and that's that's been something that you guys have really spent a lot of time on recently, uh, really right. building out. Well, the shipping portal we have, it's been a while. We right, no, you've, yeah, right, you've had it for a while. Uh, we There's have cool smaller things. versions yeah. with the other customers, Team right. using part of it, RX Site using part of it, right, mm -hmm. and uh, filtration. The biggest issue that we find that companies have is um, I would say okay shipping is straightforward mm -hmm. you can go and get like the ship manager from UPS install it on your computer and there is plenty of companies that do integration with QAD for that that's not where we're special we're special if the customer have something that is unique to them mm -hmm. for example the recent implementation we had Right now, they do over 1,000 orders a day. They want to go to 4,000 orders a day. And eventually, they want to go to 10,000 orders a day. And they don't want to change a lot of the resource they have. They need a shipping system that will be able to do that, mm -hmm. right? So we got, so today, shipment is about five seconds per shipment. Mm -hmm. 10 seconds, let's say something stuck in the printer, mm -hmm. right? Even 10 seconds, that's six, let's say five orders a minute. Mm -hmm. That is 300 orders shipped in an hour. If you talk about eight hours, mm -hmm. right? So we're, you do the math, right? It. So if yeah. you, what's that? We're doing it. That sounds right. great. So 300 <laughs> multiplied by eight hours, that's 2,400 mm -hmm. orders. Mm -hmm. Take break or something, let's say 2,000 orders mm -hmm. per one shipper, mm -hmm. right? They, if they have, if they want to go to uh, 10,000 orders, all they need is five shipping stations. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. And because it's a portal, it's web, it's connect right away. Mm -hmm. If something happens to the computer, throw away the computer, bring another computer, laptop, whatever, hook up the printers, and you're up and running. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's all you need to do. Mm -hmm. There is no uh, setup, there's no installation. That's another thing we all, the technology-wise, we try to keep it um, standard. That means we don't add anything to, uh, to the browser or anything like that. Everything we use, mm -hmm. current technology that right, we can use. Right. So, so it's kind of irregardless of the software, hardware that is supporting it. It's right. like you just need yeah, right. Yeah. So the for the recent implementation, that was a big deal. Right. They needed to ship. Now, if you take standard shipping systems, it's about, I don't know, five minutes per package. Really? <laughs> yes. And that no is way. normal in the, in the industry, right? Wow. You can do some tweaking. Maybe I seen down I to like that. two That's minutes crazy. a second, right? You think it's crazy, but it's not because shipping has a lot of information and there is like five screens you have to go through and certain things you have to verify automating a lot of this stuff that's our specialty got it because remember if you do high volume you yeah. make one mistake now it translates to forty thousand dollars you just lost yeah right? yeah yeah if you ship on the wrong account yeah now you know you go go fight that work. Yeah. <laughs> say, yeah. bring us some money right yeah. so this is one out of let's say i think top five things that was important mm -hmm. the high volume shipping mm -hmm. now you can look at that in the industry there is manufacturing yeah. and there is what's called the fulfillment business right fulfillment business amazon is in the fulfillment business right? right so a lot of the companies today with qd you can see them getting into that b2c okay. right fulfillment so it's kind of like two businesses under the same roof right so this is a great opportunity for a lot of customers to go into that because if they want something yeah. that will automate the shipping and it will be fairly quick yeah. to go well, the up. Two big things there, right? You're vertically integrated, so you have more control over right. it. And then you've expanded your customer base because you right. can go direct to the consumer. Right. Yeah. And and uh, you you see growth. Let's say a company now do $100 per day. Mm -hmm. You don't need a special shipping system for that. Right, right. However, if they you know, want to go into high volume yeah. because everybody wants, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. That means more sales, more, right? Yeah. You need a solution that will answer that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, it's not just that because the shipping portal doesn't just do shipping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do a slew of things. So mm -hmm. as I said, it's one of the top five. There is about 20 things that they wanted, but mm -hmm. top five. Mm -hmm. High volume shipping, number one. Mm -hmm. We want the label on the package in five seconds. Mm -hmm. I, this is like number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, shipping is fast. Mm -hmm. But how fast can you bring the boxes to the shipping station, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So our shipping portal also handle warehouse picking. 
So there is the QD okay. picking. Yeah. You do the allocation, the picking. Let's say you picked, it says 600 orders, right. right? In the warehouse with the shipping portal, they can, through the 600 or a picking that they're in QD, they can filter even further. They can say, okay, we want to do the Amazon Direct first. Let's say Amazon orders have to be out the door by nine o'clock in the morning, okay. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So you cannot just go and, and try to pick all 600. You want the 200 orders that needs to be out the door by, by, this, yeah. by, right. by nine o'clock. You may say, okay, I want the orders, the single line orders. I want, so inside the warehouse, yeah. right? So yeah. that's beyond QED. Yeah. So as we said, QED is great. It does great job with allocation and, and streamline all the, the manufacturing and you can create the inventory. Mm-hmm. However, within the warehouse, they have their own tribal knowledge, what needs to be done. Okay, and if there is stuff that needs to uh, be done first and uh, prioritized, they can say, okay, we want all the single orders. We want all these sold to, to be now to pick up. Okay, we have these people that these orders, we need to do repackaging. Mm. Okay, so they can say, okay, we want these orders mm-hmm. uh, to go out because they, they designate a couple of people in the repackaging because let's say it comes in boxes of 12 and they need four, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, somebody has to open the box, right? right. And, and take four and then go to where the other boxes are and, and put it in a box. And then yeah. now you can close it and you can send it to the shipping station. They, they may say, okay, within that 600 orders, right? Mm-hmm. We want to have a, all, the, um, all the orders that, a, that have we said single line, multi line, but they can also say we want. Uh, I, I said sold to before, but yeah. I'm going to enhance on that. So yeah. sold to, right? Yeah. If you have like a third party, right? Right, right. And you do yeah. uh, we the were orders talking for about them. this the other day, like right. a, a decreased number of sold to. Right. Yeah. Let's say you're sold to. Yeah. You have some problems with them, and they say, look, right. if you're not ship on time, we're yeah. going to drop you. Right. Okay. So you want to give them priority. Right. So you want to do the picking and make sure they're out the door first. Right. right? So it gives so you're the warehouse. categorizing what you're picking based off of different criteria. Correct. And a shipping portal. Correct. And you can prioritize Correct. accordingly. And now there is, depends on the customer. It's also they may want to skip certain traceability mm-hmm. to gain speed. Mm-hmm. Right. So in QD's pick, you can say, okay, every time I take something from the shelf, mm-hmm. I want to um record it that now it's off the shelf right before it even get to the shipping or you can say i don't care just bring me all of it mm-hmm. and at the time of shipping i'm going to clear it out from inventory mm-hmm. right so it depends so if you want speed no, you're yeah. going to compromise somewhere that's only five second turnaround that's that should be fine <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. the, the thing is also again like you have products um like Eagle. Eagle is awesome. Mm-hmm. Really, they take care of a lot of the interfaces and QD now also have their own uh, products and there's other companies that are yeah. really great. However, again, this is on need to need basis, right? If the customer needs their picking to be a certain way, they want to do it with labels instead of uh, electronics because they think it will be faster. Right. You need to cater to the customer. Right. Okay. Customer is king. Yeah. Right. If they tell you we want to have ten thousand orders out the door every day, yeah. right? If you do nine thousand, you failed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you're not preparing, I mean, you need the customer to be aware. You need five shipping stations, right? right? At right. least, and maybe you have six or seven for backup. Right? Yeah. However, you have to. It has to be part of the equation. So this is, in in the shipping portal, that's one of the things. Other other project the same, but it, it shows in the shipping mm-hmm. portal. Mm-hmm. So top, that's a two out of five. Number three, performances in the warehouse, right? When you print a pick list in the shipping portal, you can say, I assign to that picker, Mm -hmm. okay? Let's say John and Mary, they're working in the warehouse. Now you can actually start timing Mm -hmm. from the time that you got the pick list, Mm -hmm. how long it took until it got to the shipping. And then you can also time the shipper because from the time it got to the shipper, how long it take you to get it, Mm -hmm. you know, on on the truck. And now you have performances within the warehouse and you can learn from that. And you can say, yeah. okay, why it takes John like 20 minutes and it takes Mary 10 minutes. And then you realize John orders, he get a lot of repackaging. Mm. Okay, maybe we need to separate that. Mm. So now John can go, we can compare apples to apples. Right, okay, right. Okay, and let's say yeah. all the repackaging, let's, let's give a, 
um, uh, Mike, the, all the repackaging, and then we can compare Mike with somebody else that does repackaging. So that is the third top thing, mm -hmm. because again, speed, if you cannot measure it, yeah. you cannot improve it. Right, right. right. Yeah. So in the warehouse, you want to make sure and measure. Yeah. Now, if you talk about metadata, like uh, the data about the data, that means you know what metadata is, right? Okay. So <laughs> if, you, if you skip steps. Teach, teach Spencer and Max, what is metadata? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you take. I don't know. <laughs> no, I do. You, if, you, if you have every transaction recorded and you know exactly right, that hinders speed, mm -hmm. but you have more control and you don't need special um, an analysis. Mm -hmm. But if you skip steps, Right. You have to have special programming, special analysis to gather all this uh, data and, and try to, uh, to drill through it and understand. Mm -hmm. So that's another part yeah. that we provide, which is part of the shipping portal. Mm -hmm. So they have all kinds of reports and they can see what's going on just from the mass of data that comes in mm -hmm. because we calculate times and we have a certain a, a formula and how do we calculate the time per shipper, per picker. Right, so at the end of the day, they can see it mm -hmm. and they can see yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Right? And they can compare the same picker today, tomorrow, right? How does it, yeah. it do they improve? Right. Yeah. So this is three out of five. I'm going to go uh, two more. One, there's 20, but I'm going to just do two more. <laughs> Control over you, transactions. Part two. <laughs> Control over transactions. What happened if you made a mistake in the shipping, mm -hmm. right? What do you need to do, right? So each company have their own procedure. They may say, you have to alert customer service. Customer service has to be involved. Somebody needs to come in to examine, to see if it's really an error. And we provide the power to cancel shipments to the person in the warehouse, down to the level. So if they made a mistake, let's say they need to ship two boxes and they ship one box, right? This kind of mistake, you don't need to involve customer service. Yeah. True, there's some stuff you need to involve right. other uh, parts of the organization. But this stuff, we allow them to cancel the shipping and reship it, mm -hmm. right? If, they, if somebody in, in the other building, let's say the headquarters, customer service, sometimes it's not in the same building, they say, we have a pre-shipper, we need to cancel that. The, the customer called, right? Mm -hmm. They can, in the warehouse, cancel that. Mm -hmm. So it will not show up uh, in the shipping, it's not gonna show up in the picking, it's not gonna show up in the statistics. So this is the power to the, uh, you can go down to the person in the warehouse to have the power to, uh, to, have, to make decisions if it's something as simple as, uh, and they don't need somebody to, from customer right. service to come down and do, because this is delays. Yeah. You want to eliminate it. Yeah. By empowering yeah. uh, employees, you save time. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh, shit, I, sorry, can I say that? Yeah, I fine. screwed up, I, I, I shipped one, I said, oh shit, oh ship, oh shit. <laughs> so if I, if, I, yeah. if I shipped one, if yeah. I shipped one and I need to ship three, I didn't yeah. see, okay, the yeah. box says, okay, so that is, yeah. all right, so this is, what is, number four? Yeah. All right, I'll do number five also. Yeah. Um, right. Number five yeah. is um, we provide, um, a mobile app mm -hmm. to that anybody on their phone they can download and, and use, right? And if it's a web, they just go on Chrome and, and just, you know, save it, um, and now yeah, they have yeah. it, right? Yeah. And one of the things, that one of the big things we gave them is the ability to do inquiries on boxes and stuff mm -hmm. in the warehouse, mm -hmm. right? Especially on pre-shippers. Mm -hmm. And they can do it by work order, PO, sales order, or the pre-shipper number. So anybody in the warehouse, we provide them that ability. So they have on their mobile app, you don't, you don't even need to give them an extra, uh, you know, device, right? Mm -hmm. They already, you know, bring yeah. your own device. You, you heard right. that? Yeah. So they bring yeah. their own device from home. All they need yeah. to do, you know, yeah. and they don't even, it's not an app. So it's just a, a web page, right? Right. But it's integrated with all the information. So it's yeah. going to be, um, um, it's going to be available. Uh, all the data so they can go in the warehouse do it right away and they can see the information mm -hmm. and if somebody's asking a question and they're in the middle of the warehouse some aisle C location 75 whatever so they can right there on their phone they can mm -hmm. yeah. scan yeah. right because we use uh, the phone for scanning they, they, so there is no errors 
and they right away can can report to somebody if they're on the phone because right. it's on the phone, <laughs> right? So this is kind of like yeah. There is a lot of reasons to yeah. use the shipping uh, portal. However, these are like I think type five, top five. Yeah. And as you seen with all of these, yeah, this is not QED standard. Right. All right. So again, I can't stress how great QED is. Yeah. However, this stuff that is unique and every business has it. Uh, this is where Broom Street comes in mm -hmm. and provide the solution for them. Yeah. So you got where well, you got prioritization of what your shipping. Right. You've got the customer or the um, the employee metrics and right. tracking. You've got visibility. Right. Into the entire process. You have the empowerment of the customer. Empower, of the employees. Empower of the employees. You've got the elimination of pulling in extra departments, which is included right. in that empowerment of employees. Correct. And then you've got the ability to do that in a mobile fashion right and inquiry right. against those right. and because data. of the trustability and you can audit mm -hmm. that yeah and the audit. if somebody make a mistake mm -hmm. you can look what happened yeah and you can say uh john you made a mistake here and you can right. do training and yeah. like, oh i'm sorry i didn't know i need to do this before i do this right something mm -hmm. like that yeah. yeah usually also that's in all portals mm -hmm. all web apps or apps and that's a principle that drive us one of the principles is simplicity mm -hmm. right so you will see that the the complexity is in the programming itself the user it's very simple yeah. one two fields they don't need to yeah you know, extract the click. complexity away yeah <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. you don't want to make it complex right. okay now another thing that we do and that is beyond that we also study the customer mm -hmm. because when you implement something you don't want resistance. Mm -hmm. And everybody has resistance, the most open-minded in the world. Why? Because it's something new. Oh my God, I need to learn and spend time. Yeah. If I'm going to screw up now, until I got this correct, now I need to spend all this time. It took me two months to get this system correct. Now you want to... Yeah. If you make it as similar as you can to the current process, because the current process works, obviously, because they use it, and you add the simplicity, you reduce the training time to practically zero. Mm. Practically zero. You go and and uh, and and let the people, especially young people, you give them a mobile app. You know, it's, you don't need even a user. Yeah. Remember, it's user like, manuals. We yeah. printed books and how yeah. did it? Yeah, it's nothing frustrating like that. trying to have somebody train you how to use your own phone. Right, right, yeah. and right. So I I will add to that that this is like driving principles, right? That that we have when the simplicity is so important. Yeah, it's so important Makes to. And we, a lot of time, nag and upset yeah. <laughs> management mm -hmm. because if we don't get the correct answer or the right answers, we need to know what's the simplest way we can do that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So sometimes it's frustrated management, mm -hmm. but it's worth it because yeah. when the, who, at the end of the day, if the product is not out of the warehouse in a timely manner, yeah. everybody suffers, right? <laughs> right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking about, um, as a as a, a part two on this, I, I'd like to schedule a time, you know, for for people who are listening to this, want to learn more about it, to actually take a look at this the shipping yeah. portal. So we'll, uh, we'll if, I can, if I can if I can add one more thing, I know yeah. we're almost out of time, but yeah. I, I just add one one thing I said before, but it's worth to say it now. Yeah. Because it's independent, mm -hmm. it's standalone, right? It's it, it's integrated with QD, but if QD is down, God forbid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if there is a problem or something, yeah. they can still right. ship whatever is in the portal, right? right? Yep. And if the QD, it takes like an hour until QD is up again, yeah. they still can ship it. And when QD is up, it's synchronized, yeah. and now yeah. you know it's a smiley face. So, yeah. um, and the worst come to worst, if we need to have another, you know, we have our own DR, but if we need to have another um, interface that will upload the shipments mm -hmm. using Excel or CSV files, mm -hmm. right? So they can still ship because at the end of the day, you, you cannot invoice yeah. if it's not shipped. Right. This is important, right? Yes. I yeah. know some people try to like you know, yeah. bypass that process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you, you want accounting to be happy, mm -hmm. and accounting is happy if it's legal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> because if you own the in inventory, is money. Yeah. If you own the inventory and you yeah. say it's shipped, but you still have the inventory, it's yeah. illegal. Yeah. Right? You yeah, can't yeah. do that. Right. Uh, accounting wise. Yes. Uh, so you want everybody to be happy and you and that is 
kind of like another overseen goal that we have. The customer, uh, we need to cater to the customer. Some customer could never be happy. Mm -hmm. I know that because mm -hmm. they're always, <laughs> yeah. but they, there's no but. Mm -hmm. As far as the process, mm -hmm. right? The customer's process have to be um, um, happy. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Some yeah. employees may never be happy, but the process has to be happy. It has. If you can show that they ask for ten thousand orders out the door a day, and you can give them the capacity and you show them that it's ten thousand orders, mm -hmm. you did your job. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's awesome, Spencer. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Cool. Yeah, well, we'll definitely, um, well, I think we'll add a, a link into the show notes of this uh, podcast to um, take a look at a demo of the shipping portal. Mm, sounds uh, good. Uh, and then maybe the supplier portal too, maybe even the customer portal. We'll throw uh, them all in there. Sure. Yeah, we can do not? the CRM portal. Yeah, I don't get too greedy. No, <laughs> right. I'm not going to get too greedy, but we have... <laughs> Let me say just one thing here. Oh, gosh. We have we have developed products that we don't have customers to. Okay, this is important, mm -hmm. right? We saw a need, we developed it, and it's out there. Yeah, right? yeah. I'll I'll give you one shout out to uh, the bomb desk, right? The bill of material, the phone app, right? Yeah. We don't have customers for that. However, mm -hmm. you know, this is something because how, how mad is Stephen Martin going to be that you just said that? What I'm the bomb desk? Yeah, that you don't have a customer for it. Well, some some people says <laughs> it will be nice that, that we have it, so we just yeah. jump on it and do it mm -hmm. at least uh, you know in the rudimentary um, uh, fashion, and so you can ha you can see what what it looks like, mm -hmm. because we have 25, 30 products mm -hmm. under yeah. our belt, right? Yeah. It's, what you talk about is four or five products, but we have a lot of products. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is this is important because. Steve, definitely live and breathe, uh, you know, just development and, and making right. customers happy. Right. And we try to catch up with him. Right. right. So I get yes. calls from him five right. o'clock in the morning, Blazing three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and because we're all in the same mindset, you know, OK, what can we do? Right. That's the attitude. Right. You have a problem. What can we do? Yeah, that's cool. It's awesome. Cool. Thanks for being on the podcast. It was great to uh, have you on. And I definitely learned a lot. So appreciate it. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank, you. Thank, yep. you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Cutie Customer Podcast. It's out. It's out. <laughs> yep.